Part 1 You will hear a woman asking a shop assistant about DVD players. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 1 to 4. Hello, I'm interested in buying a DVD player. Can you help me, as I don't know very much about them? Of course. We sell quite a range. Actually, we're doing a customer survey at the moment, so I wonder if I could fill in this form about you, and that will actually help me to advise you on the best DVD player for you. Oh, OK. <laughs> First of all, your occupation. Um, student. OK. Then, have you already got a DVD player? Uh, no, I've never had one before. Uh-huh. And how much do you think you want to spend on a player? Mm, I'm not sure, really. But I have got a budget. My friend said I should allow about £100. But I can't afford over £85, so that's what I'm working on. Mm-hmm. And... Do you watch DVDs very often? Um, depends what you mean by often. I don't know what the norm is. Is it about two a week? Uh, I suppose I watch three a month. That's enough for me. Yes. <laughs> what sort of films do you like watching then? Action movies? <laughs> Not really. Oh. My boyfriend always insists we watch science fiction movies, but I prefer thrillers. Something to get your teeth into. OK. Just one more. Do you watch other DVDs, ones that are not films, like music or something? Not much, because I don't want to spend the money on something I can watch on TV, but I occasionally rent out comedy programmes, and I fight with my boyfriend over all the sports DVDs he watches. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 5 to 10. OK, let me explain a bit to you about the DVD players that are in your price range. First, there's the DB30, which has only got basic features, but it is a bargain at £69. Now, all the DVDs come with an after-sales service that starts when the guarantee runs out. As it's so cheap, the DB30 comes with a limited after-sales service, as it only includes parts. You would have to pay for most of the repair. Oh, mm, seems OK. Mm. Then, a slight grade up from that is the XL643. This comes with an additional feature in that it has an extra button allowing you to record. That's quite useful. Oh, yes. That would mean spending less on DVDs to watch. Yes, so you'd make the extra money back on it that it costs. Mm. Let me see how much it is. Uh, ah, yes. That one's actually reduced at the moment from £79 to £71.99. Oh. I think it's worth the extra myself. And is that the same level of after-sales service as the other one? Well, you get a bit more for your money because what we're offering is a discount on labour. So you don't pay the full price if you have to call an engineer out. I see.
Then the last one is this Tri-X24. It's a very good player, and you can use it to listen to your CDs as well as watch DVDs. Mm, it looks nice, but I bet it's expensive. No, it's not top of the range. Let's see. Yes, it's ninety-four pounds. But what you have to remember is that that includes insurance, so you don't have to pay extra for that. And it comes with a guarantee that's valid for three years, as opposed to the usual one. What do you think? Hmm. Maybe. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear someone talking about travelling around New Zealand. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fifteen. Now listen and answer questions eleven to fifteen. When thinking about beautiful countryside or stunning views, it has long been accepted that Australia and New Zealand have few equals. What is perhaps slightly less well known is what these countries can offer to the avid train enthusiast. Both countries have railways which pass through breathtaking scenery in the utmost of comfort. In New Zealand, you can travel from the country's biggest city, Auckland, to where a third of the population lives, its capital, Wellington, on the longest passenger rail service in the country, the Overlander. Crossing 681 kilometres, the train winds through the lush farmland of the Waikato and up the Rarumu Spiral onto an amazing volcanic plateau surrounded by native bush. On a clear day, you will be able to see three of New Zealand's most famous volcanoes, Mount Ruapehu, Mount Narahoe, and Mount Tongariro. The whole journey can be completed in 11 hours, but for those keen to see a little more of the country, the trip can be extended over three or four days. This gives travellers the opportunity of seeing the famous Waitomo Caves, relaxing in the mud pools of Rotorua, or skydiving over Lake Taupo. Moving on to the South Island, you can take the Transalpine through the Southern Alps, travelling from the South Pacific Ocean to the Tasman Sea. Climbing from Christchurch right into the Alps, this 223 km trip is particularly impressive as the train passes through 16 tunnels before descending to Greymouth at the end of the line. Taking only 5 hours, this is a relatively short trip, but it is worth noting that this journey has been listed as the sixth most scenic rail route in the world. For those that are not so keen on mountains, the South Island has a second option, the Transcoastal. With the sea on one side and the mountains on the other, it again shows some of the best scenery New Zealand has to offer. Also taking five hours, one of the highlights of this journey is the opportunities for whale watching. The fortunate few that see whales are well rewarded, but there are more common sights which are just as enjoyable, such as penguins and seals. Before you hear the rest of the recording, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20.
Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Although these three train journeys are undeniably breathtaking, some travellers prefer the longer journeys on offer in Australia. The Indian Pacific, for example, which travels from Sydney through to Perth and has been dubbed the adventure that spans Australia. With three nights on board, the train takes in the Blue Mountains and the Nullarbor Plains, and, as the name implies, the Indian Pacific shows you two oceans. This train journey holds two world records. Covering 4,352 kilometres, it is one of the world's longest train journeys. It also travels the world's longest straight stretch of railway track, 478 kilometres. For those who find these distances a little daunting, passengers can stretch their legs at a number of different stops, such as Kalgoorlie, famous for gold, and Broken Hill, first founded as a silver mine. If three days on board a train seems a little excessive, there are alternatives. The Garn, for example, which travels from Adelaide in the south to Alice Springs in the centre of the continent, taking 20 hours. Passing through Crystal Brook, Port Augusta and Woomera, this journey gives an indication of what life was like for the earlier settlers as they discovered the country. Along the way, you can also see the Iron Man sculpture, which was constructed by railway workers to commemorate the one millionth concrete sleeper laid during the construction of the line. Finally, just a quick word about the Overland, which runs between Melbourne and Adelaide. As the first train to travel between the capitals of two states, it is a historic as well as relaxing way to travel, and is famous for being the oldest long-distance train journey on the continent. With so many memorable journeys to choose from, the only problem you will have is knowing which one to do first. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. अगर लिसनिंग के साथ साथ आप स्पीकिंग की भी प्रैक्टिस करना चाहते हैं तो हमारी अपनी एप्लीकेशन है बेबी को डायल्स प्लीज डाउनलोड करो एप स्टोर और प्ले स्टोर दोनों पे अवेलेबल है और लिंक डिस्क्रिप्शन में भी हमने डाल दिया है यहाँ पे आप ए टीचर को जितने चाहें उतनी बार स्पीकिंग टाइम दे सकते हो जब चाहे तब कोई रिस्ट्रिक्शन नहीं है और अगर आप चाहते हो कि टीचर आपको आपके बैंड स्कोर बताए आपकी मिस्टेक बताए और कैसे आप पांच बैंड से सात बैंड इम्प्रूव कर सकते हो तो प्लीज यूज करो मेरा प्रोमो कोड आयल्स फिफ्टी Do not forget my promo code is IELTS50. Now turns to part 3. Part 3. You will hear a student, Penny, talking to two friends, Ray and Louise, about a television competition Ray has entered called Travel Documentary. Before you hear the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Hi, haven't seen you two in ages. What have you been up to? Hi, Penny. Ray is really excited. He's just been shortlisted for travel documentary. He could be off travelling around the world for three months. Travel documentary? What's that? You've never heard of it? Don't you watch TV? Well, actually, no, hardly ever, especially since I've started working on my thesis. I don't have time to breathe, let alone watch TV. So what's this all about, Ray? Well, actually, it, it's a competition run by Public TV. It involves my two great loves, travel and filmmaking. Is it that program where people are sent around the world making documentary videos? I have heard of it. Fantastic! 
So you've been chosen? Not yet. I'm one of 34 selected for an interview next week, so I've made it through the first cut. Yeah, there were over 200 applicants from around the country. Pretty amazing, hey? Well, I've been lucky so far. What's the next stage? Thirteen are chosen from the interview to do a four-week training course in documentary filmmaking. Then, the eight finalists get sent off with a video camera to travel around the world. Sounds incredible. What's the catch? The catch is that every two weeks you have to send in a ten-minute video from a different part of the world. It's broadcast on TV along with the work of three of the other competitors and judged by a panel of experts and the TV audience. So you're under a lot of pressure. Wow, I guess so. You mean you're on television every two weeks? Yep, that's right. But first I have to be selected. Do you have to have any filmmaking experience to apply? Some background in photography or video making helps. But you're not supposed to be an expert. In fact, you can't apply if you've already worked in filmmaking. We all get the same four-week course, so we start with the same skills. Can you go anywhere in the world you want? Each competitor makes up his or her own travel plans and has to get them approved. Before the conversation continues, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now, as the conversation continues, answer questions 27 to 30. Have you talked with anyone else who has done it? As a matter of fact, just last week I met Sarah Price, a girl from here who did it last year. What did she have to say about it? She said it was the most amazing experience of her life, but it was really tough at times. I think you'd have to be really brave to take off like that alone with so much responsibility. It's not like going on a holiday, is it? <laughs> no. Two weeks in a country, often where you can't speak the language, to find a story, film it, organise all the editing. Then you're off to a completely different part of the world to start all over again. Pretty exhausting, but exciting too. What a way to see the world. What about Sarah Price? Did she have any bad experiences? She said the worst part was when she got some mysterious fever in Mongolia and thought she might have to be sent home. Fortunately, it got better, but she said it was scary to feel really ill when you're alone so far away. So what made you want to apply? When I saw the program on TV a while ago, I thought, this is for me. I've always wanted to travel, but needed to work for a year before I could even think about it. Then a new series started up. I thought, now's my chance. Don't you think you'll be lonely? I don't think I'll have time to be homesick. I'm more worried about having too much to do and not enough time to get things organised. So we might be watching you on television in the next few months? I hope so, if I'm lucky. When will you know for sure? They choose the final eight in March. A month later, you're on your way. So do you have to pay anything? Nothing. It's all paid for. Course, camera, flights, accommodation and in-country travel. The budget is pretty tight, though. No extras. I sure hope you get it. Then I'll be finding time to watch at least one program on television every week. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
अभी तो वी भी कोड ऐप डाउनलोड नहीं की वो यहाँ पे सिर्फ स्पीकिंग नहीं स्पीकिंग लिसनिंग रीडिंग राइटिंग सारे के सारे फ्री में मॉड्यूल अवेलेबल है वो भी लेटेस्ट कंटेक्स के साथ और तो यहाँ पे आई के लाइव क्लासेस भी देते हैं आई टी पे अप्रूव टीचर फ्री में तो प्लीज़ डाउनलोड करो ट्राई करो और अपने दोस्तों के साथ शेयर करो ताकि ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा बच्चों तक ये बात पहुँच सके Now turns to part four. Part four. You will hear a tutor giving some business students instructions about a finance project. You now have thirty seconds to read questions thirty-one to thirty-six. Okay, can you quieten down, please? Now, today I'm going to talk to you about your assignment. We've been studying the effects of the exchange rate, so I'm going to give you a project to do on this. Right? Can you make some notes while I'm talking? The first thing that I'd like you to do in order to prepare this is to select where you're interested in. I mean, which country, and therefore which currency you're going to be operating in. Okay, now the purpose of the project is to make money, and I'm hoping some of you will make a significant amount. So I want you to suppose that you have one hundred pounds that you will have to invest purely in the rises and falls of the exchange system. In other words, you'll be trying to predict rates. This is a project that you'll be doing together, but before you work together, you'll have to go off and research what you need to know about the economy of that country and how well it's doing or is expected to do in the near future. You could all make up a little information sheet with your notes on, clearly legible. Because then I want you to get together. We can do that next week, and to go round and read about each other's countries. When you see how well or badly each country is doing, I want you to decide what your exchange rate is going to be against all the other currencies. After that is all sorted, what you're going to do is go round the other students. And attempt to sell your money to the others. Remember, this will depend on the success of your country's economy and the rate you fixed for your currency. Now, you're not allowed to just swap currencies with each other, but you may wish to buy from the other countries. But you must do a proper transaction. All the way through this, you must keep your accounts properly for each transaction. I'll give you one week to do this, and then we will set a time for the deals to finish, a bit like the stock exchange. And at that point, I will ask you to calculate how much you have made. Is that clear? You now have thirty seconds to read questions thirty-seven to forty. Okay. Now, before you begin that, there are a few things I want you to read up on to prepare. You need to look at the economies of the UK's main trading partners. I don't mean all of them, because that would be over 80, but just the 29 principal ones. 
There are summaries in the last three books on the book list I've given you. And so that you can practice applying the criteria on assessment I gave you, I'd then like you to focus just on one sector across all the countries. The most common one across every country is farming. But as much agricultural produce is for domestic consumption, I'd like you to look at manufacturing. Then I would like you to do a detailed investigation of one particular aspect. I was going to give you a choice, but I think as we've just started the course, it's better if we all look at the same thing and then we can discuss it in the seminars. So the thing I'd like you all to look at is fluctuations in import prices. Now, you need to do all that before you start the project as it will help you assess the economies of the countries you'll be representing in the project. Don't worry, you've got plenty of time. Exam week is December the 8th, then it's the holidays until January the 6th, so I don't need the project in till February the 5th. Is that okay? Now, any questions on this? Because it's That is the end of part four. अभी तक बेबी को डाउनलोड नहीं की यहाँ पे लाखों बच्चे फ्री में आइस क्लियर कर रहे हैं विद द हेल्प ऑफ बेबी को डाइस तो लिंक इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन ट्राई करो डू नॉट फॉरगेट माय प्रोमो कोड आइस फिफ्टी ओके